Oh, Rest Here RV TV, welcome. Check it out, we're on Interstate 40. Only for about another mile. <laughs> gonna head south, heading back down uh, to Quartzsite. But we're gonna take the scenic route. We're gonna do a little exploring on our way down there. Right up here is exit 9. This will be Highway 95. We're gonna head down through Havasu and keep on trucking south. It's going to be one pretty ride. March and springtime in the desert. This is one of my favorite, favorite times. The weather's perfect. You get little fronts move through, you get some winds. Maybe even a little chance of rain, but that's about it. Okay, going to make a left up here. This is truckers, everything here. There's what, one, two, three truck stops here. Pilot, loves, and then that big uh, Chevron. They got storage out here, big storage buildings, and that's about it. And that guy's getting the ticket. <laughs> it's only 35 miles an hour through here. A lot of people speed through. But heavily traveled, you know, this is one of the only roads that heads down south off 40. There's Loves. Look at all the trucks. Goodness. Now this road up here to the left goes to Havasu Heights. But on the right, they were granted permission. That was BLM land. They got some kind of permission. Was able to purchase the land. And they're building those uh, metal buildings. They're storage and they're for RVs. And it's a pretty high rent district. If you get up here a little bit, you'll see them better. There they are. Isn't that something? have a storage unit out in the middle of the heat here because <laughs> you're a long ways from the water up here then right up here on the left is good old Lone Tree BLM and there's a lot of campers still there right now you can actually camp for free right near Lake Havasu Absolutely amazing. Right off 95 here. Look at them all down there. That's that's that lower area than the upper. It's not very big, but boy, they pack in the RVs in there. And you talk about ATV trails. They go. You can go all the way into town. Clear down into the town of Havasu. Or you can even take the trails over to the water. Which is still quite a ways. We're a few miles down to the water from up here. You can see they got power station, power plants, power lines running down through their cell towers. But the Colorado River is on the other side of those uh, mountains right there. Pretty area. Always windy up here too. Hang on to your hat. But once again, this is the Lone Tree BLM free camping area. Check it out on if you're around town here. Up here, are those little mountains that people like to climb. That one's called the uh, Claw Mountain. Something like that. There's YouTube videos on this stuff. All right, we're almost into town. And off to the right, more camping. You can't go back in there very far, but you, you can get in there a little ways. You always see like small trailers, truck campers, that kind of stuff back in there. Alright, well I'm just going to fast track it through Havasu because we're heading south. I'd like to go down to that Bill Williams uh, Reserve, Wildlife Reserve. Check that out on the way down. I haven't done that this year yet.
Lake Havasu and this road. There's at least two dozen traffic lights. There you can see a little bit of the lake. High rent houses there, high rent district. Real estate here has gone through the roof. Literally. Million dollar homes anymore. All over the place. A little shopping center here and also all the car dealers are out this way. Alright, let's do some miles. Right there on the right, that's where the museum is that we uh, filmed, uh, what was that, a couple weeks ago. And what a good time I had exploring around Havasu. If you get a chance, check out those videos, they're real recent. Took the boat ride, stayed at Lake Havasu State Park. Went to the Winterfest, seen uh, the mini RC boat races, it's pretty cool. Right over there, there's the bridge, the London Bridge. You can see it right through those trees. Okay, that's the last traffic light, yay, going through Havasu. One of these days I gotta count them. Ninety-five, going down to Parker. It's around, I think, forty miles to get downtown of Parker. Over here on the left, you'll see a bunch of RVs. There's also uh, UTV and ATV uh, championship races now. They develop tracks out there. They've uh, really taken over that area. You see it advertised quite a bit on Facebook. But they even got some pros that go in there and race. You can see the dust cloud. And, uh, there's a power plant, rock plant, all kinds of stuff out there. Now one cool little state park, it's right up here on the right, it's called Cattail Cove. I haven't spent a night there yet, I've drove down in there before, but it is really neat. It's all by itself, you get right on the water. Right off 95, you can see the water, now straight ahead, that's Cattail Cove. I don't know how many sites they got. They got day use and uh, camping down there. AT tra ATV trails everywhere once again. There's a good look at uh, the lake that you don't get to see much. Really a desolate area. Swing back around. There's 95. There's the power lines that run through there. And that's it. Kind of looks like Mars, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, let's keep on trucking. Right up the road here, I really enjoy a stop that I haven't done this year yet. Uh, it's called Bill Williams Wildlife Reserve. Preserve, reserve, something like that. Little island you can walk out on and stuff. So I thought, hey, weather's perfect. It should be open. I don't know if their visitor center will be open. But we're going to find out here real quick. We're coming right up on it. See all that brown looking grass? That's part of it. The Bill Williams River actually dumps into uh, Lake Havasu here. Comes clear out of Lake Alamo and uh, way up in the mountains. 
from the eastern part of Arizona. The bridge that crosses the Bill Williams River is right here. Yay. Busy, busy place. Now you can see it. There's the preserve. Fishermen galore. Pretty soon all that will be green. Springtime in the desert. Okay, right up here about a mile. We're going to pull on in. We're going to check it out. And we're, what's the sign say? 17 miles from Parker. Really close to Parker Dam. There's another good look at it. You can fish, launch. They got a boat launch here. There's like a little house up here. Plus scenic views. You can just pull in there and take pictures from up on the road. There's that house and here it is right here. Yay. And it's free. No charge to get in here. Alright. Let's pull down in. Check her out. There's a visitor center, but it is closed. I see a closed sign on it. That's okay. They got some good storyboards and stuff. Let's go for a quick walk. There's one of the pumping stations. Uh, it pumps water over the mountains. Probably part of the aqueduct thing. Because there's several aqueducts that feed off this. One goes to California. There's another one goes all the way down to Phoenix. Not really sure how it all works. There's a good map. Shows you the kind of layout here. It's not a very big area. But it's all safe for the wildlife. Refuge. Not a preserve. Well, you can walk the paths. Look at that rattlesnakes! Yik! <laughs> Plaque stuck in a rock there. They got restrooms here. All kinds of fishing areas, fish cleaning areas where you catch, clean the fish. Check this out. There's a good little viewpoint here. I've been here before. Always enjoy it. One of my favorite stops. Plus, in another month, guess what you'll get? Spring bloom here. A lot of flowers bloom. Stories about the farmers that used to be here. A lot of Native American. A lot of people got displaced along the Colorado when they built all the dams. Ooh, here you go. A little bit about the dam fishing. The pumps, huh? Wow, that one pump right here, it's a, a hundred feet deep. And they pump it up 262 feet up to a tunnel. I, I'll be darned, I never knew that. That's cool. CAP pumping station. Look at that. Learn something new every day. 12 foot diameter pipe. Wow. That's a lot of water. And that's that thing right over there. Cool. There's one of the fishing platforms. You 
always see boats in here. Pretty cool area. I missed one storyboard. This one right here. The last stand. There it is. That's about the people that got displaced. Maybe there's a picture of old Teddy Roosevelt. Bunch of ducks down there. They got a duck buffet going. <laughs> Eating the seaweed. There's a better look at the island there that you walk out on. Great. Let's hit the road. Well, it's too bad the visitor center was closed. I've been in there. It's not a very big one. They got like a few maps and brochures and a little bit about the wildlife that's around here, the birds, that kind of thing. It's all run by volunteers. I think those are the people that stay in the fifth wheels there. Okay, head back up here to 95. To me, personally, in my opinion, and I've traveled all over the country and explored, this 20 mile stretch of road through here is one of the most scenic and beautiful areas you could ever see. Whether it's the color of the mountains against the blue water of the Lake Havasu, you know, look there, there's that Havasu Springs, that resort, the wildlife, the boating, the fishing, the cleanness of the whole area. It's absolutely amazing. And just the landscape itself kind of reminds you of Mars. <laughs> Love it. Well, while we're in this area, we got to do a little more exploring. As always, the journey continues. Talk soon. <laughs>